Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. I know I am new to Crowdcast. This is a platform Simon introduced me to. So we wanted to give people who are here on time some time to introduce yourself in the chat if you wish. This is one of my favorite parts of doing this online work is to realize that we're really joining from so many different corners. So we're at, um, we're at 11 o'clock. Um, we're going to formally start. And Great. so I will turn it over to my good friend, Simon. Welcome, everybody. I'd like to open this very special healing service for the queer soul called I Am Not a Mistake with an Invocation. Our wisdom awakens, our memory returns. Within these open hearts, a sacred fire burns. And the way is simple, the way is clear, the way is humble, the way is here. May the fountain within my being be ever flowing, ever flowing, pure, life giving to all. And may the fragrance blossoming from my soul be softening, enlightening the hearts of all. And may the world I weave with the breath I breathe bring beauty, bring beauty. And may the steps I walk on the sacred earth be in peace be in peace our wisdom awakens our memory returns within these open hearts a sacred fire burns and the way is simple the way is clear the way is humble the way is here And then I've got second invocation song. This one was written specifically for the queer community, made famous by Cindy Lauper. I know you'll know this one, so you might want to sing along. You with the sad eyes, don't be discouraged, oh, I realize it's hard to take courage. In a world full of people, you can lose sight of it all. And the darkness inside you makes you feel so small. I see your true colors shining through. I see your true colors, and that's why I love you. So don't be afraid to let them show your true colors. True colors are beautiful. Show me a smile then Don't be unhappy, can't remember when I last saw you laughing If this world makes you crazy And you've taken all you can bear Just call me up Cause you'll know I'll be there I see your true colors shining through I see your true colors And that's why I love you So don't be afraid to let them show your true colors True colors are beautiful Like a rainbow You with the sad eyes Don't be discouraged, so oh, I realize It's hard to take courage In a world full of people You can lose sight of it all and the darkness inside you makes you feel so small But I see your true colors shining through I see your true colors And that's why I love you So don't be afraid to let them show Your true colors, true colors True colors are shining through I see your true colors And that's why I love you So don't be afraid to let them show your true colors True colors are beautiful Like a rainbow
Jamie. I'm still reverberating from the song. Thank you, Simon. Oh, you're good, morning. good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're at in the world, and welcome to our healing service for the queer soul. I am professionally Dr. Jamie Marriage, but you can just call me Jamie. My pronouns are she, they. And this program that we're putting on this morning is an offering from my organization, the Institute for Creative Mindfulness. Uh, in some, we're a trauma training program with a lot of mindfulness and contemplative focus. And every year we try to do something for pride that's more of a community event and not a training. And this year, especially since I've been really upping the game on teaching and training on spiritual abuse, which is one of my specialties. And obviously we know why it's needed now more than ever. Um, I really felt it appropriate that we have a service here for, as the title says, the queer soul. Um, the depth, the profundity of the wounding of people like me, people like us, if you're an ally here attending, people like those you love has just been immense at the hands of people who claim to be representing God or something spiritual. Yet, I really wanted to invite my dear friend, uh, Reverend Simon, for this experience uh, because he's one of many people of faith who I have met on the healing part of my journey who have taught me that people of faith can be radically accepting and affirming. And that being a Christian or being a Jew or being whatever you may identify as from a spiritual perspective and being queer do go together. And we really, really, really want to celebrate that today. So uh, Simon is really going to be taking the lead on much of this service. Um, I, I met Simon uh, as we both sit on the Wisdom Council of a beautiful uh, organization called Abbey of the Arts, which is a um, contemplative Christian ministry that is radically accepting and affirming. And ever since I got involved with the Abbey in 2014, I have always felt free to engage in the spiritual practices I love and to be exactly who I am as a queer woman. And Simon is a good friend I've met through that ministry. And I wanted more of you to experience his music and his teaching and his message uh, today. So I'd like to begin with a land blessing. Something Simon and I really both agree on, and we talked about it, prayed on it as we were putting the service together is a teaching that you may have heard from Emma Lazarus, you may have heard from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that none of us are free until all of us are free. And so when we're offering a program like this for queer healing, gender expansive healing, and our liberation and the continuation of our rights, we must also be mindful that none of us are free until all of us are free. So we also hold in our heart the immense work that still needs to be done to advance where we're at in so many areas where people are being oppressed. I know the news from the US this week with the attack on reproductive justice is weighing heavy on many of our hearts. So we offer that. We offer the continued fight for justice and equity for people of color, for indigenous people, for people who have traditionally been excluded from the mainstreams of a lot of faith communities. And we want to honor the indigenous individuals, the indigenous cultures, the indigenous spiritual traditions that have come before us on the lands where we sit this morning. For me here in Akron, Ohio, that's the lands of the Erie Nation. And if you've not yet looked into the lands on where you sit, 
We encourage you to do that at some point. Learn about them. Thank them. And endeavor to be good stewards of the land you occupy. None of us are free until all of us are free. Simon, I welcome you. And thank you for your introduction. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Now, a few of you know me because this is on my live stream channel. So there's some of my people here, but many of you probably have never met me before. And I thought maybe it would help you orientate if I did a tiny introduction into what I do online in the world. So I am an interspiritual musical minister, interfaith, interspiritual. I grew up outside of religion, but then learned a lot about the religious traditions. I specifically trained to be a minister for the queer community because growing up, um, there wasn't any kind of sacred presence for people who were LGBTQIA+. Um, and I wanted to, to be part of that wave of change. And uh, sometimes I work specifically with the queer community, but uh, often I work with people. You know what? People are people are people. So, very brief introduction. I'll tell you a little bit more about my story later. And I have to say that I am standing on sacred ground, on Abenaki land, but as a transgender, openly transsexual person who is a minister, I would not be here if there were not elders that paved the way from me for me, some of whom were locked up, some of whom were uh, given such horrific treatment that I am just astonished that they kept going. And uh, I think they are a lot braver than me. And I just want to acknowledge the the queer ancestors that gave us the world that we are growing into. People often ask me, what kind of minister are you? Well, um, I'm a queer minister and I believe in a queer God. And I've got a poem that um, I'll, I'll put the link in the chat for you in case you want to find out later. Infleshed.com. They have a lot of really good resources. And this is a poem that they published that I love. It's called Untidy God. What of a God who doesn't believe in having it all figured out, in this idea of a single tidy story, but instead a God who changes with the day and never stops asking you to learn how to love every messy, complicated, seemingly contradictory side of themselves? What of a God who has been so many different things and ways, one that has always been transitioning, taking on new flesh, shedding what hurts, claiming what frees, finding a fresh way to show us the divine that we've been, and everything that's kept us from living it out? What of a God that is tired of being misgendered, isn't interested in excuses any longer, gets a little bit rude about it, doesn't mind asking you to try a bit harder, to let go of everything you're more loyal to than love? What of a God who spends more time dancing with strangers at 2 a.m., cooking a hot meal for the turned away youth, or protesting to abolish prisons and police, than attending any worship on Sunday mornings? What of a God whose inclusion is radical? One who calls from the fringes to the halls of power and places of comfort, saying, come, there's a place for you here. If you just lay down your life, your power, your privilege, you can be family. You will become alive again. What if a God who is queer, as in politically, as in strange and proud of it, as in about the things of love and bodies and liberation and solidarity? What of a God who is found in the flesh of everyone you have denied a kind word? A safe bathroom, a marriage ceremony, a friendly smile, access to health care, a home, a faith community, asylum, 
or even just respect. Listen for this God today, and you will find them in selfies and stories coming out again and again, in testimonies and silence, in gracious invitation, and fierce and radical calls to a different kind of living. A different kind of family. A different kind of love. So bring your offerings, lend your hands, whisper your prayers, and wail your laments before all that is holy and gay, holy and lesbian, holy and queer, holy and bi, holy and trans, holy and asexual, holy and intersex, holy and still finding their way. Amen. Poetry is such a <laughs> great way for explaining what you can't explain. And uh, I'm going to pass back to Jamie because I think we have another voice. Yeah. Yes, we have another poet who we're bringing in. And Simon, this username is Kel, K-E-L-L. -L, uh, so you can bring her in when I introduce. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, one of my dear friends who often collaborates with me, Dr. Kelly Kirksey. And she is for me, I call her Tia, she's an aunt, she's a family member to me. And she has taught me so much about allyship, both what we as white bodied people in this life need to do to be better allies. And she is the very embodiment for me of what it's like to be an ally for those of us who identify as queer and gender expansive. So my sweet Dr. Kelly uh, will bring you on the screen to share your poem offering with us. All right, we'll see what happens. There we are. <laughs> oh, can you hear me? Yes, beautifully. Oh, all right. That was, that was a bit of a, a challenge for me. And I'll, I'll say just like life, right? That we have, we have these challenges. So first, I want to say thank you for including me in this uh, wonderful service, this healing service, which is so important. And I want to share a poem that I wrote back in 2020 in the midst of the George Floyd being murdered and just the racial justice coming back into global view. And this poem is called um, Stay Awake. So give me a second to pull it up here. All right. My dear friends, do not fall back asleep. Although the days are short and the night is long, do not fall back asleep. If your heart still beats for humanity, I beg you, go find your kindling, reignite the flame within your heart. Do not fall back asleep. Remember the hundreds of years of fighting for equal rights, to love, to marry, to be, to live. Equality for a rainbow of love must be ongoing and active. Please do not fall back asleep. Remember, we still can't breathe. The closet is still tight. The closet is still confining. Reaffirm your commitment to justice. Ask yourself, what is my action for change? What is my action for change? Do not fall back asleep. Remember, we still can't breathe. Even though we find a way to keep smiling, laughing, dancing, crying, working, marching, do not fall back asleep. My dear ally, my dear, dear, ally of strength, of power, of courage. You are needed. If one of us is not free, none of us are free. I beg you, stay conscious. 
I beg you, please stay awake. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kang. Absolutely. Thank you for allowing me to share in this space. Thank you so much. I kind of sing a song about humanity connecting across difference. Um, this is by Over the Rhine. It's called Born. I've got, I'll give you that here so you can see. It's an amazing song. And I really believe that part of being awake, how I understand that, is about um, keeping the heart open, keeping your eyes open. And that can actually mean that you have encounters with people that are very different from you. I've sang this to Jewish mothers who've lost their sons in overdoses. I sang it to so many people. My favorite memory was singing it in Portland, Oregon to these two very, very tall trans women. They just had a hand fasting as a couple. And they were crying, they were crying so much. They had to leave in the middle of the song, but afterwards they came back and they just rocked me in their armpit. <laughs> it was amazing. You can sing along. I was born to laugh. I learned to laugh through my tears And I was born to love I'm gonna learn to love without fear So pour me a glass of wine We'll talk late into the night Who knows what we'll find Intuition deja vu The Holy Ghost haunting you Whatever you got, I don't mind Cause I was born to laugh I learned to laugh Through my tears And I was born to love I'm gonna learn to love without fear I'll put my elbows on the table Then I'll listen long as I am able There's nowhere I'd rather be Secret fears, supernatural Thank God for this new laughter Thank God Joke's on me Cause I Was born to laugh I learned to laugh Through my tears And I Was born to love I'm gonna learn to love Without fear Love without fear, love without fear, love without fear. Cause I was born to laugh, I learned to laugh through my tears. And I was born to love. I'm gonna learn to love without fear. Mm. 
so many things I love about that song. If there were any lyrics that jumped out of you, please put them in the chat there. But one of the things I love is that it's not an end result. I am going to learn to love without fear. <laughs> it's okay if we're a work in progress. So, Jamie has asked me very kindly to um, make this a uh, healing service. So we're, we've taken... Sunday morning and putting on our finery, our rainbow finery, and uh, we're, we're going to use some aspects of church, but with a difference. <laughs> so um, you'll see some things like a sermon and a blessing, and and uh, but we're going to start with something that hasn't doesn't tend to happen in church, and I don't know why it doesn't. It really should, which is um, an apology and a blessing of the queers. To do this, I need to uh, talk about the harm for a little moment. And um, don't worry, we're not going to stay there. But by naming the harm, we invite it into our bodies, into our space. So I just want to take us there for a moment. What are the aspects of the sacred of God that you were taught that were lies? Lies that harmed you about your self-worth more specifically. Now maybe you grew up like me outside of religion, but the influence of them is is everywhere. It's pervasive. So we're all, we're all in this together here, whether it's uh, culturally endorsed religious views or directly religious views. What were some of the what were some of the things? Can you remember them in your mind? Now, in a moment, we're going to let all that shit go. But for a moment, what was the message that it taught you? I picture them. I, I like to picture things visually. I picture them around you, these messages, these ugly truths. And then take a deep breath in your strength and your authenticity and step up to them and blow them away. They're not even dust. They're just thought forms. There's no weight to them. They evaporate in the sun and with your breath. So in your imagination, blow those thought forms away. And open your eyes, and that will do the blessing. But it's amazing to me that people cherish and devote themselves to um, such critical, unpleasant, controlling God. Um, I heard Father Greg Boyle speaking recently, and he was talking about working with gang members in L.A. He calls them homies, not homos, homies. And um, he talked about tenderness as the ingredient for healing. That part that is a recognition of the harm and burden inflicted for no reason at all. And when he was talking about tenderness and how that's the healing, I heard in it the recognition of the harm and the unfair burden. So I want to take a moment to cherish and honor all of you who are LGBTQIA2+, and gender non-conforming, or non-conforming in whatever way, honorary queers, the world is enriched by your difference and presence. And if we were in a room together, which I wish we were, I'd ask for those who identify as queer to come and stand at the front and we would applause and stand and cheer in the live stream. We can't do that. It was hard enough just getting one person up on stage. <laughs> um, so we're going to do that a little bit differently. If you identify as LGBTQIA and you'd like to receive this blessing, please just type your name in the chat. If you want to give a little rainbow description, great. We will read your names and your words with delight. They will uh, touch our eyeballs with a smile. If you want to take a moment to equivalent of stand up in this live stream, please do use the chat for that. You know, they 
Nikam. It's lovely to see your names. It's important that we make space here. The holy pause lets people in. <laughs> As you're doing this, I'm going to sing the blessing. Please keep typing. It's making my heart very happy. Oh, you don't need words for this one. It's really easy. And sometimes with these little chants, um, you can dismiss them. I really mean this, that you are the face of the divine. If you don't like that word, God, take it out, throw it out, replace it with love. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God And if you want to sing it as we, because you're not alone we are the face of God You are in our hearts You are a part of us Cause we are the face of God It didn't work, let's go back to the original You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God And if you are an ally they can't hear your voice, even though you're singing to them. So please put hearts and love into the chat. Make it obvious that you see the light. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God One more time you are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God Now if you're watching the replay, type in the hearts and, and, the, and introduce yourself. Don't just let this be a moment in time. We want this song, this blessing to keep singing out. Blessed are you, my gender non-conforming, my queer siblings, brave ones. I am enriched by the light that you hold. You know, sometimes it's um, so fragile to be human. And our act of becoming is such a powerful act, but it feels fragile. I think that's part of why I really loved hearing Father Greg Boyle remind us that um, tenderness, the sister of fragility, is the missing ingredient that brings the hurt homey towards whole healing. I'm going to sing you um, one of my songs. It's 20 years old. Um, if you like it, it's in this documentary. So 20 years ago, they filmed a documentary about my voice breaking and me being a transgender person in Glasgow and then in Australia a long time ago. Um, and I, I want to sing you one of the songs that was um, 
central to this fragile process. This is called Peter Pan. And um, it used to be an alto. Uh, and 20 years ago, they didn't really know what would happen to transgender people if they uh, did medical reassignment. And they uh, told me that I may or may not be able to sing again. And as a singer, that was a big deal. And you know, sometimes our barriers to towards authenticity are so enormous that um, we can hang up on little things. And my voice was the little piece that I hung up on. I just need to find out how it starts. Aha! I'm Peter Pan, I've always been this way An accidental real-life fairy tale Frog that turned to prince with month and year Peter Pan inside me he knows everything about me He says, it's really time you let me go Everything I have I'll give him Lay it at his feet there for him Everything I know and all I own Cause it's time to do this To live life, to grow Sacrifice my voice to please you Lay it at your feet there for you Everything I know and all I own Little boy I know you and I'll do Anything to help you give you Everything you need to let you grow Cause it's time to do this To live life To go I'm Peter Pan I've always been this way An accidental real life fairy tale Mermaid who gave all her specialness To join mankind To join mankind When I listen to that recording Of me singing that song in my old alto voice I just sound so small and fragile and I almost kind of cheer myself on the way, <laughs> the way that we just did with the chat there earlier in the blessing it's funny being a queer person who is also straight I'm married um, my wife identifies as queer very strongly so um, but we look straight and we live in rural Vermont on a mountainside and uh some of you can probably relate to being a queer person, but looking straight. And, and me, paradoxically, I also am straight. Who knows what I am? Uh, that yes and the paradox. Paradox is a holy thing, by the way. We talk about it in the Celtic tradition as between and betwixt this God that is uh, fli f less fixed, less solid, and more shape-shifting and malleable. But I'm digressing. So something that many people don't see is how fragile I once was, how violent the city was, how bottles and fists and jobs were denied, bottles thrown, fists in the face. And I remember, I remember. And I always try and stay within that safety zone, a few seats away from folks on the bus in Glasgow who I think might get targeted. Because the world is sexually violent. It is horrifically racist and it can be very vicious I will always remember 
and it fuels my thirst for justice because I remember how one person sitting close by me on the bus would keep me safe. And I'm not talking about 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday. I'm talking about the middle of the day on a Tuesday. That quote that we've heard twice from Dr. Kelly and before that uh, from Dr. Jamie. None, no one is free until we are all free. Martin Luther King. No one is free until we're all free and Jewish woman called Emma Lazarus, she said it this way, until we are all free, we are none of us free. So I'm going to share a short sermon about this. It's called Queer Eye for God. And because uh, we're doing this church style, I'm going to do the thing that preachers do and say a little bit of Psalm 19 before I start telling you about my queer God. Purify my heart. May every word, every thought, every motive, every intention be pleasing in your sight, O oh God. Are you all doing okay? Can you let me know in the chat? I know that Jamie said not to like chat, but I, I really like the feedback. <laughs> um, there's a Sufi story about a zealot monkey who spends his time pulling fish out from the lakes in an attempt to save them from their watery graves. Now this religious homophobia that we live in is very much like that zealot monkey. And it, uh, an anti-gay, judgmental, Bible-bashing God was my introduction to that word God. I mean... I knew the sacred out in Mother Nature. I had an innate sense of what holiness was. But I, uh, it, the religious teachings that I first learned about were the hateful ones. So I decided to have nothing to do with organized religion or religious people. And this worked really well for me until I met one or two incredible people of faith that I admired a lot. And I even fell in love with one of them and ended up marrying her. We're not married anymore. She was the most open-minded Christian I'd ever met. And this love of friendship and this love as a lover changes us. Thank God for passion and eros and inspiration. You know, if we put the heartbreak aside, how important are relationships? Intimacy. It's holy. It's a gift. Now, I am so stunned at many things in my life, but the thing that shocks me the most is that I am a religious person now. I happen to be religious for multiple religions that you wouldn't put together necessarily. Um, they fit nicely in my heart, though. Um, but I'm also very much uh, an outsider of religion, and I keep a safe distance. The reason I am on Crowdcast instead of YouTube is to put myself a little bit away. It's, uh, it's important that we keep safe. And uh, I always make it, if you are not willing to give me your email address, then I actually don't want you in my live stream. You can watch the replay, <laughs> but I don't want to be uh, exposed to um, negative thinking. A God that doesn't include all is too small to believe in. And one of the ways I learned about the sacred was by rejecting a false God. I knew in my heart that God is not an angry parent that sends people to hell. We humans can create hell, sure, yeah. But this angry, conditionally loving God was just completely untrue. And it kind of pointed to its opposite, that life like the rainforest, thrives in diversity. The people who Bible bashed me growing up did not make me straight. No, in fact, they just made God more gay, more diverse, inclusive, and fabulous. So I suppose I have to thank them, really. You know, I, I believe that humans innately recognize truth when we stumble across it. And I think this is even more strongly the case when people have rubbed lies into your eyes, into your core. Now, there's um, to illustrate what I'm going to say next, 
there's a beautiful Leonard Cohen song that just kills me every single time. It's the song called If I Didn't Have Your Love. And I haven't learned to play it yet, so I can't sing it to you. But um, he talks about the nature of the sacred in this song. And he says, if the sea were sand alone and the flowers made of stone and no one that you hurt could ever heal. Well, that's how broken I would be, what my life would seem to me if I didn't have your love to make it real. And the Bible bashing people that showed me that God is not a judgmental, critical parent really made me begin to open my eyes in awe at the astonishment of we can heal. When I mess up with my friendships, they can forgive me that we are given a sunrise that flowers and fruits and seasons come it's really we take it because it's so normal to us but it's really fabulous and astonishing and this god that i see everywhere to me is queer and i spell her g-o-d-d-e and i even don't think god is a very helpful word but i use it as a placeholder and one of the things that my queer god is she is healing absolute love and the way that people talk about the sacred is just not it's just not right. It's not big enough. You know, when people talk about the judgmental parent that dishes out mercy. God isn't a judgment. That's a human thing. God is the mercy. God is the healing. It's, it is we placing ourselves into this life-giving truth, this bigger concept of what God is. And I have to really thank my uh, queer experience of childhood for, for showing me what God is not. There's no judgment here. Before I go, I want to talk about co-creating and adding energy to my queer, uh, my queer God. Uh, how do we do this? And I'm going to give you a little uh, metaphor that I once heard. Uh, there's a teacher called Letizia Nito. She's in Olympia, does anti-racism work. She's a therapist, I think. I met her one time. And um, she would teach this. That we people are like an egg. that when the time is right, the life force held within cracks the shell of the egg and the new life comes out. But when outside forces crack the shell, they kill the life, they take life away. If you are somebody that proselytizes, right, you need to be really, really careful that you're not taking life away from the outside, but instead doing all that you can to create a loving kindness, a nest in which the life force will find its own way out, will learn, will look around, will mirror And something that I try and do as a minister is take time to really see people, to try and deeply listen and understand another. To uh, th that's part of checking your own privilege. And I, one of the reasons I do this is because the people that gave that to me 20, 30 years ago pretty much saved my life. Richard Brendan wrote this. The world doesn't want to be saved. It wants to be loved, and that's how you save it. But saved isn't a big enough word. If we're like the expansive queer God, let's try on a bigger lens. I love Richard Brendan's quote, but I think this one is more what I'm getting at. Donna Markova, what is loved reveals its loveliness. What is loved reveals its loveliness. And there's a way that we can be that can help bring vitality and healing to the world around us. I describe this as tapping into the way that God sees us, which is our, as our becoming and not based on who we have been. Can we see each other based on who we're becoming? Now, I believe that we do this 
consciously or and unconsciously all the time. I always say that our biggest act of prayer is our life. Our beingness is our biggest act of prayer. After all, we're human beings and not human doings. That legacy lives on. And I want to say, you lovely humans who've come here because you're non-conforming, because you're lesbian, bi, queer, intersex, transgender, two-spirit, intersex, different, beautifully bisexual. I love that language is not big enough. <laughs> you who are non-conforming, you give me permission to be myself. Thank you. The world needs you just the way you are. And I'm going to close with uh, a wee song that's very dear to my heart. Um, it's called Japanese Bowl. And it's by Peter Mayer. Actually, I'll give you that so you can look it up afterwards. I'm like one of those Japanese bowls That were made long ago I have some cracks in me They have been filled with gold That's what they used back then When they had a bowl to mend And they did not hide the cracks It made them shine instead So now every old scar shows from every time I broke and anyone's eyes can see I'm not what I used to be But in the collector's mind all of these jagged lines make me more beautiful worth a much higher price I'm like one of those Japanese bowls I was made long ago I have some cracks you can see See how they shine of gold Thank you. My, my heart is quite full right now, just shimmering, bathing in the blessings of so much wisdom that was just shared with me by my friend. And so Simon asked me at this point in the service to lead a meditation, lead a blessing on our intrinsic worth and goodness. Now, if you grew up in kind of most representations of Catholicism, you may have been one who received the teaching of original sin in a lot of the Protestant expressions of faith. I know this metaphor of we're, we're a dung heap and God brings white snow to, to cover us and make us clean. And a lot of this just horrendous imagery that can be intoned and as much as I have benefited from Christian spiritual practices, even if I wasn't a queer woman, <laughs> a lot of those teachings would have still bristled pretty strongly on me as a trauma survivor and kept me you know, cut off from both the love of God and my inherent worth and goodness. And I'm somebody who really credits my yoga practice as a major part of my spiritual abuse healing. And it's also helped me to reconcile a lot of what has worked in the Christian traditions in which I've practiced. And to, as Simon beautifully said, compost the rest. Or realize that maybe those teachings came from people who had not yet worked on their own trauma. 
something that is taught in many lineages of yoga, specifically in the practice of yoga nidra, is that you are already whole. Who you are can never be anything less than whole. The wave can never not be the ocean. You are the ocean. And these days and weeks and experiences of our life and our various life cycles, if that's your belief, you know, we may express ourselves as these waves, but you are always that ocean. You are the essence of God themselves embodied and beautiful and whole. And even as I'm sharing those words, depending on where you may be coming from in your spiritual healing journey, there might be bringing up some visceral, oh no, you know, I'm not, I'm defective. What about what this person said and that person said? Enough. Enough. That is their stuff, their unhealing. You are whole. You are of God. You are the ocean. So I'll invite you in whatever way feels appropriate to drop in for the next few minutes and be with that idea. Maybe it feels most appropriate for you to close your eyes, put a hand or two on the heart. Maybe you're feeling called into movement and some other type of expression or creation with this beautiful body that you inhabit. And I will give you about two or three minutes here, whether you're in stillness or in movement, whether you want to receive the words I gave you or go with some expression that feels more organic to you. The invitation is to connect, to savor this idea. It's not an idea, this truth really, that I am whole. I am of God. I am the ocean. And I had not planned on doing this. So I'm just following spirit here. I'd like to offer a short chant from many of the lineages of yoga. And it is a song expression. It's pretty easy to pick up of this idea that who I am 
is already whole. Eternal, infinite, and whole. I'll start in English, and you can just drop in as you may feel called. You can continue to move, chant, or simply be. I am that I am. 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 The Sanskrit is so hum. So hum, 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 so hum. I am. I am that 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 I am. So hum, so hum, so hum, so hum, so hum, so hum, so. So hum, so hum. So hum, so hum. So hum, so hum. So hum, so hum. So hum, so. Let's take one more moment here to notice. And I encourage you as we lead towards the end of our service that whatever is coming up for you is valid. And continue to use your practices of care, whether that's writing, dancing, walking, being in nature, speaking with your therapist, to continue moving, being with whatever this service may have brought up for you. 
you are whole. It's the trauma that severs us from that knowing. It's the way we've been treated that severs us from that knowing. And so it's my prayer for you that the healing continues. Thank you for being here today, my friends. Simon? Mm, thank you for that very powerful prayer. And I'd like for us to build on that now. I'm going to open us in a time of prayers for yourself, for your loved ones, for the world. Whatever your faith tradition is or not, is not, you're welcome to write your prayer in your own language. So how we're going to do this is I'm going to sing a Celtic blessing. This actually comes from the, the Deer's Cry, a prayer attributed to St. Patrick that he's supposedly he said this prayer, part of this prayer, when he was in danger. And I like to use as a circling a lot of the earth-based traditions, places sacred in and all around us. So we're going to sing it first in uh, first person to receive the blessing. And then uh, I'll sing it in second person. You're welcome to sing along. Nobody can hear you, so it doesn't matter if you get this song right. Um, and uh, then I'll invite you to write your prayers into the chat. And I think we've got time for me to at least read out some of them. And I want you to know that I'll come back and hold them all in prayer afterwards. And if you're a replay watcher, I come back specifically to read the prayers. So your prayers really are dear to me. So here's the words. So we'll sing it in first person, first time. Love with me, love before me, love behind me, love in me, love beneath me, love above me, love on my right, love on my left, love when I lie down, love when I arise, love when I take rest, love to shield me. Take that heart prayer and we send it out. Love with you, love before you, love behind you, love in you, love beneath you, love above you, love on your right. Love on your left Love when you lie down Love when you arise Love when you take rest Love to shield you And it's a good practice to uh, to write your prayers or to speak them out loud. So please bring your prayers for your for the world. And if you type them into the chat, I'll read them aloud. Open this time of prayer by praying for everybody who is in prison everyone who's trapped slavery we send a tender blessing to everybody who works in the sex industry send prayers out to all those 
who are seeking asylum and safety this day. Pray for teenagers in the care system, especially those who are queer. We uphold Tide's prayer for all those who do not feel whole. Wrap your love around them like a blanket, dear one. Pray for peace in Ukraine. We pray for peace and freedom in Russia. Uphold Daniel's prayer, my higher power. May your healing spirit touch me every day I walk upon this earth. My higher power. May your healing spirit touch me each day I walk upon this earth. Holly prays prayers for those who were just introduced to their queer God. Shane's prayers as follows. May love shield all my kindred, all my fellow creatures in waking and sleeping in their differences and gifts. May I be attentive so I do not miss the call to be an ally, to be loving, to be brave. I pull Jamie's prayer for our family and friends who do not accept or affirm us and our people. Open hearts giving them what they need to heal. Loving God, our prayers are so clumsy, especially when I'm reading them out for them the chant, but their message is sincere. You hear every prayer, you uphold every prayer, whether we see evidence of it or not. Take these, our prayers, and place them into your safekeeping. Bring peace where there is none. Bring safety to those who need it. Bring justice to this world. Bring an end to sexism and racism. May every voice be heard, including turning down the voices, the, the volume and some of the voices we hear all the time. Loving God, queerer and more beautiful and much more extravagant than we can begin to imagine. The enormity of a feather on the Atlantic Ocean doesn't even begin to represent you. All our words are limited, but we place these tender heart prayers into your safekeeping. Amen. O oh, love, hear my prayer, O oh, love, hear my prayer, when I call, come be near, 
O love, hear my prayer. O love, hear my prayer. Come and listen, be here. And if I missed your prayer, please forgive me. <sighs> Jamie, do you want to come up for a second? Um, I would love your company as we do a little uh, benediction Thank you, my friend. sending out. Mm, let's see if I can bring you up on stage. Oh, on stage, this foot screen, I love it. So again, Simon, I want to thank you for your service today. It's always a learning experience to be in your presence and to have mm. this extended time. Such a blessing for me personally. And thank you to folks who joined us today live. Many of you I know, many of you I don't. Uh, and for those who will be watching later on the replay, uh, we're, mm. we're woven in this special time in history that happened today on June 26th of 2022 and may the healing continue because we know there's a lot of it that is still needed mm -hmm. so just like kind of any church service or spiritual service uh again if, if this is not in your ability or willingness to do today you can just kind of tune me out um, of course we don't charge for a service like this uh but in terms of taking up a collection what we're encouraging you to do is to give of your heart if and as you're able to an organization that supports liberation of people that you hold dear. Um, you know, it could be Trevor Project, it could be uh, an organization that works for reproductive justice, especially for, for queer folks. I wanna put in the chat, um, Simon is a minister whose work uh, flourishes on donations and patronage. So if you're so moved to uh, contribute to the ministry of somebody in our community, that's also an option for, for giving uh, financially if you're able to. And if that is not a possibility today, your prayers, your action, your presence is a gift as well. And it's just as important of a gift. So, such a, yes, such a blessing. It's, it's magical. You feel it. I mean, Jamie, you can feel it, huh? You can feel all these people gathered. It's so different than if just the two of us were talking. I love that we are learning to pray beyond time and space. For sure. And I'll also put up a link in chat as we lead towards the closing here of a trauma resources page that I cultivate and, and maintain that you're free to use for yourself or to share in your communities. So, Simon? Yeah, I'm going to end with a blessing. We're going to um, send out a blessing to all those whose dignity and rights are denied. Um, and yeah, we'll bless one another with it as well. This is a, a wee song that was written by two of my friends. It's called The Angel Wash, Mia Kelly and Amy Ringel. And uh, I know that some of you have your settings, so you can't see the words so easily. So I'll move it up a little bit. <laughs> uh, I just have to remember how to play it now. Yeah, so as I'm getting my guitar ready to really um, sincerely send out a blessing. You know, we, we understand that invisible things are real, but we so doubt it. We so doubt prayer. And uh, I, I, lo I, I heard a, a Jewish teacher once say that we're here to bless. That's the reason that the humans were put on the earth and uh, I like that idea so uh, I bless people a lot and this is one of my favorite songs written by two wonderful queers I behold you beautiful one I behold you child of the earth and sun let my love wash over you let my love watch over you I behold you beautiful one I behold you child of the earth and sun let my love wash over you let my love watch over you I behold you beautiful one I behold you child of the earth and sun let my love wash over you let my love watch over you 
I behold you, beautiful one. I behold you, child of the earth and sun. Let my love wash over you. Let my love watch over you. One more time. I behold you, beautiful one. I behold you, child of the earth and sun. Let my love wash over you. Let my love watch over you. We dedicate the light that we have grown between our hearts with our listening to all those that need it this day, all those who are um, surrounded by danger and who live in fear. And we send out the light to them. Amen. So take care, dear ones. And uh, thank you so much for being here. I'll bring Jamie up one more time just to wave goodbye and then we will end. And uh, also I wanted to say thank you to Dr. Kelly. It was so hard getting you up the first time that I'll not get you up again, but we're grateful to you. I'm going to jazz. Wanna blow them a kiss? I'm going to jazz hands goodbye. Okay. And then wave from there. Peace, everyone. Peace. Bye.